What's up everybody, I'm Adam, you're watching Model Aviator, and this week we have a new announcement from Horizon Hobby for you. E-Flight's latest, the UMX Turbo Timber Evolution. Now unless you've been living under a rock for the last 9 or 10 years, you've heard of an E-Flight Timber. In fact, most of you have probably at least flown one, if not owned one or several. They have evolved over the years since their initial release quite a bit. And when they get them to the point to where they've given us as much as they possibly can that we've asked for and they've thrown as many upgrades at it as they possibly can, they dub it the Evo. The 1.5 meter turbo timber evolution is an absolutely amazing airplane and I haven't talked to anyone that's flown one of those that didn't absolutely love it, including myself. So a few years ago, E-Flight announced the UMX Turbo Timber. And that turned out to be one of the best-selling Ultra Micros of all time. I owned one. It was absolutely great. And at the time, if you'd told me that that is as good as it'll get, I'd have been satisfied with that. But now, I've flown this. And what makes this an evolution is more than you'd think. They essentially took the idea of the UMX Turbo Timber and turned it up to 11. We'll tell you all the things that they did, give you all the details. We'll fly it for you and we'll tell you what we think. So first things first, our little Evo arrived in perfect condition. They come packed in your typical Horizon Hobby UMX box. Those things are great for storage as well as transportation. And the airplane is fully assembled. You pull it out of the box, charge some batteries, program it in your transmitter, and you're ready to go. Couldn't be simpler. There are some goodies in the box. The first thing is all the hardware necessary to install the accessory set of floats should you decide you want to put your Evo on floats. The other thing is a set of leading edge slats. Now explaining how slats work to people that don't know would be a very complicated ordeal. I'm not going to go through that. Essentially, just to simplify it, slats increase your critical angle of attack. In other words, they lower your stall speed, so by installing them on the leading edge of the wings, you can fly the airplane slower. And they do work at this size. With my original UMX Turbo Timber, I flew it both with and without, and I can tell you that they work. However, there's a downside. You will lose some aerobatic capability. The airplane will still fly inverted, but it will require more down elevator to hold it. You'll lose a little bit of the snappiness, and that's the reason that I left them off of my Evo. With full flaps, this airplane slows down good. I'm pretty good at getting the nose up without the slats and I can get it slow enough to suit me for the stall flying that I want to do, but when it's time to do aerobatics, I want it fully aerobatic and capable of everything that it's capable of, so I left them off. But if you want to put them on, you just need to remember this is EPS foam. So use a foam safe CA to install your slats. And that reminds me of a question that I was asked a few weeks ago by a viewer in the comments. Somebody asked, why is it that Horizon Hobby still makes airplanes out of EPS when everybody knows that EPO is the way to go? Well, first and foremost, to my knowledge, most of the airplanes above the UMX size airplanes are made of EPO at Horizon Hobby. There may be one or two exceptions, but for the most part, everything is made of EPO except the Ultra Micros. And the reason that they make the UMX planes out of EPS is because at this small size, it's a bit stiffer than EPO, but it's a lot lighter. And that's the crucial point. When you're talking about airplanes in the three to five ounce range ready to fly, weight is crucial and they've got to make them as light as possible. So that is why it's made of EPS. So the big question is, what makes this thing evolution level? Well, the airframe, spec-wise, is pretty much the same dimensions as the old UMX Turbo Timber. It has a wingspan of 27.48 inches, a length of 19.49 inches. Our particular example weighed 4.07 ounces right out of the box, empty, and with the heaviest pack that we used to fly, we were at 5.01 ounces. Wingspan and length is pretty much where the similarities end. In fact, when it comes to the new Evo, there's only a few things that carry over from the original UMX Turbo Timber. The prop, the spinner, the prop adapter, the optional slats, and the main tires, and the tailwheel tire. That's it. Everything else about this airplane is new. And it starts with the airframe. They have greatly stiffened this airframe. The fuselage has been reinforced. 
the wings have been reinforced and that's pretty obvious. You've always had the front carbon spar. They added a rear carbon spar to stiffen up the wings. And take a look at these horizontals. This is the horizontal off the original UMX Turbo Timber and this is the one off the UMX Turbo Timber Evolution. Much thicker. All this stiffening really comes in handy because it ends up being a more capable airplane. They changed out all the electronics too to be able to push this new airframe. On the electronic side it starts with upgraded linear servos all the way around and those are hooked to your control surfaces via thicker stronger push rods, upgraded adjustable ball links, and much thicker control horns. Then you start to get under the hood of this thing and you see part of the magic in that new board. It's a 2S and 3S compatible ESC and a much stronger upgraded motor. And of course being set up for 2S and 3S power, that gives you a plethora of battery choices. If you've got any of the old E-Flight 2S 280 milliamp 30C packs with the PH plug, they'll work fine in the Evo. As will the new Spectrum 2S 300 milliamp 30C packs with the PH plug. And to be able to use those in the Evo, you only need this Spectrum Smart adapter. If you're looking for more direct plug-in, Spectrum offers a 2S 300 milliamp 50C pack with a JST and a balanced lead. And if you're looking to maximize your power, go for the Spectrum 3S 300 milliamp 30C pack with a JST and a balanced lead. Now, if you're looking to balance any of these packs with a current charger that you have, if you've got a smart charger or something that has an EC3 or an IC3 connector, you need only buy this charge lead if you've got PH connectors or this one if you have JSTs. Another neat feature in the new board that the UMX EVO has is the technology that they pack in it. You have AS3X and Safe Select, but also if you have a Spectrum Smart Compatible transmitter, you can get smart telemetry feedback. It starts with the flight log page, which gives you your fades, frame losses, and holds. Next would be your minimum and maximum receiver voltage over the course of a flight. Then you have ESC telemetry, your min and max, which gives you your minimum and maximum RPMs, volts, amps, and MOSFET temperature. And then the last page that you can pull up is an in-flight, on-the-fly ESC status page, which gives you, while flying, your RPMs, volts, amps, and MOSFET temperature. And you can program your transmitter, if you don't want to look at that during flight, to give you a voice call out and tell you all that information on the fly. Now, I am not the most tech savvy guy out there, but even I have to admit, being able to get all that tech and all that telemetry out of something that tiny, that's kind of cool. So we've given you the skinny on the new UMX Turbo Timber Evolution. The only thing left to do now is talk a little bit about the setup and get to the flying. Now when it comes to the manual, manual is very good. There is one little mistake. It is a mistake that Horizon Hobby is aware of and they'll be making an online correction very soon. When they're telling you how to program your transmitter, they forgot to put the wing and tail type. So just so you know, the wing type is one aileron, one flap, and the tail type is normal. Now, we set our plane up by the book at first, did a lot of flying by the book, and then we deviated from the book setup a little bit. So about the first eight or ten minutes that you see, that is with the book setup. The airplane flies wonderfully. There's nothing wrong with the setup that they give you to start with. Now, when it comes to stole flying and doing stole landings with any stole plane, when you're doing that full flap, super slow drag in when you're trying to do a three point and get it as slow as possible before the wheels touch, that takes a combination of flaring with elevator but also working the throttle. Well, with an ultra micro, you have to jockey the throttle a little bit more because there's no mass, so there's no retained energy. You have to make up for the lack of momentum by using power. So jockeying the throttle on three cell in particular, this airplane makes so much power on three cell that you can blurp it just a little too much, make more thrust than you intended, and make the airplane balloon. Don't really have that problem on two cell, and to be honest, it's not gonna be a problem for most people. I'm just that super particular guy that wants to try to make this thing land like that quarter scale super cub over there. So yeah, I'm that guy. So the changes we made to make that a little better in the bush flying that you're gonna see on three cell is we lessened the angle of the flaps a bit. Airplane still slows down really, really good. It just makes the airplane a little less effective 
are affected by throttle blips and we incorporated a throttle curve that takes some of the sensitivity on the low end away on three cell we've got it on a switch two cell it's not on three cell we turn it on we still have all the power on the high end it's just not so sensitive on the low end and it makes getting that nice scale three point stole landing a lot easier so there is a lot of flight footage we do a lot of sport aerobatics on 2S and 3S. We hover it on 3S. We get into some shenanigans where we take it off a big tire, knife edge it through a building a couple times, and then we get into some scaled bush flying. It's very easy to find cool ways to have fun with this airplane, and we did. We also flew it on all of the aforementioned batteries that we have, the three different two cells and the three cell. In all the flight footage in the top left hand corner you'll see a graphic that will tell you what battery is being used for the flight footage that you're watching. So now you're going to see our setup with the changes that we made. You're going to see a picture of our throttle curve. You're going to see a ton of really cool flight footage. Check it out. We'll meet you back here and we'll give you our final thoughts. The UMX Evo is really stable in slow flight and it's very easy to fly slow. It has a pretty wide speed envelope, even on 2S, and makes enough power to be a pretty effective sport plane.
it's not dramatic, but you can feel a little bit of difference when you're flying with the lightest of the 2S packs versus the slightly heavier 3-cell packs. So on 3-cell, we're going to answer a couple of questions right off the bat. The first one is, how powerful is it? Well, that powerful. It's kind of bonkers. And the other one is, will it hover? Yeah, it will. I mentioned the speed envelope earlier, well on 3-cell, it's even wider. When you get this thing the beans on 3S, it will haul.
we threw in this little clip just to show you how well it does a nice forward slip. Here we've got a little bit of a headwind to play with. I think a couple more miles an hour and we'd almost be able to stop this thing. So you knew we were going to play with the building. We figured since the airplane is as small as it is, I should at least knife edge through it. So here we've got another headwind going and the way the wind direction was moving it gave us a little bit of a crossing headwind coming into this little dip. It gave us kind of an uphill, side hill landing. It's pretty fun.
so here we're doing some bush flying off of our favorite gravel road and we picked a couple of different places in the road that we've never used before for this footage so that's going to be kind of cool and different and there was some wind on this day at this point doing some funky stuff off the trees behind me so it was a bit of a challenge but with the AS3X the Evo handled it well. You're about to see a touch and go off the gravel in slow-mo. Check out the gear. And there you go. Did you see the slow-mo footage of the gear working across that gravel road there at the end? I was very impressed by that. That gear was bouncing all over the place, but the airframe above it was hardly upset at all. Interesting. So, I like a lot about this airplane. I love the paint scheme. I love the light package. It's a lot of lights for an Ultra Micro. Pretty complete, I'd say. I like some of the options that are available, the optional floats, the fact that it comes with the mounting brackets for that, the optional slats. I think a lot of people will take advantage of that. I really dig the telemetry options in such a small package. If you have a compatible transmitter like our NX8, that stuff's pretty fun to play with and interesting to study. You learn a lot from checking that out. I love the fact that it is actually truly 2S and 3S compatible on any of the 2S's, even the old 280 E-Flight packs. This thing is a very capable aerobatic sport plane with a pretty decent flight time. And on 3S, it's just bonkers. This thing has vertical until you essentially get bored and decide to stop. And the speed envelope is everything from crawling to hauling. It's just a very impressive airplane, very good sport aerobatic airplane, very capable, and at $169.99, that's the same price as the UMX Timber X. It's a very different airplane. It is supremely capable at 3D and XA, very aggressive, but a lot harder airplane to fly than this. This is easier to fly, easier to slow down. It slows down more. It's a way better bush plane. 
I think they're good complements to each other, and $169.99 for either one it seems fair to me. So the question that you have to ask yourself is, is this truly an evolution? Does it deserve that evolution name that Horizon Hobby holds so dear? Is it enough of an evolution of all the Ultra Micro Timbers before it to deserve it? And I think when you consider the options, the features, and the capabilities of this airplane, it's undeniable. Yeah, it does. This truly is the UMX Turbo Timber Evolution. And I think adding this thing to the hangar for anybody would be a pretty cool idea. We got remote ID coming here in the States, and the cool thing about anything that weighs less than 8 ounces, of which this does, ready to fly, is it's exempt from that. So even after that stuff passes, when you just want an easy like Sunday morning, laid back good time, you can take something like this out, find yourself a place to fly, a little bush flying anywhere you want, and nobody's going to care. I think that's kind of a selling point in and of itself. Horizon Hobby calls it skill level 2. I agree. That means you're past a trainer. I think it does have safe. It is a high wing. So could you use it as a trainer? Yeah, you could, but there are better trainers out there. Make a great second airplane. So with that, if you decide you'd like to add this to your hangar, I don't think anybody that decides to do that is going to be sorry they did. We are a Horizon Hobby affiliate. We've got a link in the description. If you use that, we really appreciate that. You can still go through our link and use any coupon codes that you have or any points that you might have. It's not going to cost you more to buy one of these through our link, but it will definitely help us out and give our channel some support when you do that. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. With that, we're going to sign off. Take care of yourselves. Happy flying. We'll see you next week with something cool with wings.